for many of these patients with COPD, um, they've had exposure either to tobacco smoke or, or an environmental uh, um, irritant that has caused the COPD or they have genetic COPD with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So more often these are going to be adults and as uh, patients get older this overlap becomes more likely, especially in the asthma patients who have had poorly controlled asthma. The longer their asthma goes poorly controlled, the more likely they may have some irreversibility or some uh, remodeling going on and start to look more and more like a COPD patient. Even though they've had a long history of, of asthma, they start to mimic a COPD patient even if they haven't smoked. Yeah, so thankfully Gina, both Gina, the Global Initiatives for Asthma and, and Gold have addressed this. And while I don't know that we have a set of guidelines, what we're developing is easy ways to diagnose these patients or at least bring up the topic with the patient. Hey, you have COPD but you look like you also have some asthma. We might want to address that. And so those helpful guidelines are coming out and, and, and with the GINA guidelines, it gives you a very easy template to follow. And ultimately the long term here is to discover just how well we can treat these patients because if they have an overlap and you're able to treat those symptoms, for instance a COPD patient, you treat their asthma, in all likelihood, they'll do much better, and there's some data to support that, that these ACOS patients do better when treated appropriately than somebody that has just standard COPD, and that's very exciting for patients.